Let's take a look at how we can use Excel to create a cash flow statement from a balance sheet and an income statement. So over here on the left, I have a balance sheet for 2022 and 2021. And down here, I also have the income statement for 2022. Now, I have to have two years worth of data for the balance sheet because a balance sheet is a snapshot in time. It doesn't show us what's happened over the course of a period. An income statement, we sometimes say, is like a movie or a video. It shows you sales over 2022. So oftentimes we like to create a cash flow statement. So I've created one here, and then we'll actually go and do it. But the cash flow statement has three areas of cash flow. Cash flow from operating activities, from investing activities, and from financing activities. And over here, I've actually completed one, and so I actually have some numbers here. And if we do it correctly, we should wind up with the cash balance for 2022, and we do. So let's see how we can create this here. So operating activities, net income, that's part of operating activities, right? We uh, create, you know, we um, sell stuff, we uh, subtract costs, we wind up with some money in the end. We also may have changes in working capital. That would be uh, accounts receivable, inventories, accounts payable, and accruals. So if we do this correctly, we'll get the cash flow from operating activities. And then we have investing activities. We invest in uh, property, plant, and equipment, PPE. We also have changes in short-term investments. And then our finding financing activities would be things like notes payable, long-term bonds, changes in equity, and any distributions like preferred dividends or common dividends. And we'll get the cash from financing activities. And when we sum those up, we'll get the change in cash flow. And then we can figure out what the ending cash balance is by taking the beginning cash balance and then um, looking at how the cash flows changed. All right, so let's see what we can do here. All right, net income, we just go to the balance, uh, to the income statement, and we just click on that cell, 255. Depreciation and amortization. We want to add those back in. Why do we do that? Because depreciation is a non-cash expense. Okay, we don't actually pay anybody. We have to deduct this from our, um, our sales in order to get the correct tax amount because it is tax deductible. If we don't deduct that, we won't have the right amount. Changes in working capital. Okay, changes in accounts receivable. Now let's think about this. Accounts receivable rows. Is that a good thing or a bad thing? That's actually a negative impact because increasing accounts receivable means that we're not getting cash. We're getting, you know, IOUs from, cre uh, from people who bought stuff from us. So in this case, it's going to be the negative of 2022's accounts receivable. minus uh, 2021's account receivable. So minus 116, wait a minute, I put that in the wrong place, sorry. Let me do that again, equals negative 2022. this minus this. All right, change in inventories. Again, increasing inventories is going to decrease the amount of cash we have. We have to use cash to pay for those inventories. 
So again, it's going to be equals, and this is going to be a negative sign. This year's inventory minus last year's ending year inventory. Changes in accounts payable. Well, increasing accounts payable, that's actually good for us. That actually increases the amount of cash we have, right? We haven't paid out as much money. So in this case, this is just going to be, it's not going to be negative. We're just going to subtract this year from last year to see the change in accounts payable. And accruals, the same thing, okay? Increasing accruals means that we didn't use cash here. And so we can just sum this up. And let's see here, let's sum all of this up. And we get 163, a positive 163 cash, cash flow from operating activities. How about from investing activities? Well, let's take a look here. We purchased property, plant, and equipment, right? That's the difference between these two. Now, this is net property, plant, and equipment. So this reflects depreciation as well. So we're going to have to add back in the depreciation. So an increase in property, plant, and equipment, right, means that we've used up cash. So this is going to be like the accounts receivable. We're going to make this a negative number. It's going to be the current year's property, plant, and equipment minus the previous year's property, plant, and equipment. And then because this includes depreciation, we have to add back in the depreciation. And so we have minus 420. And we also had some short-term investments here right here. So decreasing the amount of short-term investments is actually good because that means we have cash. So this is going to be a negative of this year minus last year. And so our cash flow from investing activities, again, we just sum this up. Minus 390. Okay, now financing activities. We have the change in notes payable. Again, notes payable going up. That's a good thing for us. Equals this minus this. The change in long-term bonds. Again, increasing the amount of bonds brings cash in. We use bonds to finance um, investments and other activities. For the company the change in equity well it didn't change but let me put the formula in here anyhow that is did we issue more stock in this case we did not issue any all right we also paid out and down here as some additional information we paid out a preferred dividend of seven So this is going to equal, this is going to be a negative number because we paid it out. And we paid out dividends as well of 60. And so our cash from financing activities, we'll just sum this up. 25. So our change in cash flow is going to equal the change in cash flow from operating activities plus the change due to investing activities plus the change from financing activities. And we get minus two dollars. What was our beginning cash balance on the balance sheet? 102. And our ending cash balance, 
should be the sum of these two. And let's check. If we go back to our balance sheet, our new cash balance is 100. So it looks like we did it correctly. So again, let's just recap that. We have three different activities that lead to changes in cash flow from operations, right? Selling things, you know, accounts receivable, having inventories, you know, paying suppliers, etc. We have investing activities where we purchase property, plant, and equipment, and also short term investments, perhaps. And then we have financing activities, right? We raise money by having notes payable or bonds payable. Uh, we can increase the amount of equity. We can issue stock. We also can pay a dividend to preferred stockholders and common stockholders. And when you sum up all these changes, the changes, the cash from financing activities, from investing activities, and from operating activities, you get the change in cash flow. And if you've done it correctly, the beginning balance, so in this case, the 2021 cash flow is the beginning balance, and then any change in cash flow, which was, which was $2 here, should then, summing those up, give us the ending balance, cash balance. And so it looks like we did it correctly. This is a really great way to help you understand how this works. It's also nice if you create this spreadsheet and you put the formulas in, you can change some numbers here. We could change, you know, um, you know, sales. And if we have formulas in here for, you know, taxes and the tax rate, et cetera, we could then see how that impacts our um, ending cash balance.